Okay, today's lab is the determination of absolute zero. So in this lab, you're going to be able to determine an experimental value of absolute zero um, from extrapolating data from a plot of temperature versus volume, okay? Um, so another part of this lab is to be able to graph. So make sure that you look at the handout in the uh, lab so you can see some directions on how to make a good graph. Um, so here I have all of my things that I need for the setup. So I have a hot plate and then I have my beaker for the boiling water bath. I also have a flask that has this stopper that has a um, piece of glass tubing in it. Um, so the first thing I want to do is I want to mark where that stopper stops inside my flask. So I'm going to make mark that in a second. That's why I have this box of markers here. We'll also need a boiling stone. Go ahead and put that into um, the hot water bath. I don't have that on yet, but there's my boiling stone. We also need a couple of graduated cylinders um, to measure some volumes later on. Okay, um, so we're going to turn on this water bath. Okay, so I'm going to heat up this water to boiling. Um, once it is boiling, I'm going to put in the flask into um, the boiling water bag. Um, so what you're doing today is you're going to trap a warm sample of air of a known volume and measure the volume of a sample of that sample of air when it cools. While I'm waiting for this water to heat up, I've already measured to make sure that it's gonna fit into my flask so it's not gonna overflow, but I do wanna mark where that stopper is because that's the volume that we're going to measure in a little bit. So I'm just gonna put a marker where that stopper ends. Remember that the volume of a gas is going to take up the entire volume of the container. Um, so if our container stops here, we wanna mark that so we don't overfill it and our volume be off. Uh, so we're just going to wait for this water to boil, then we're going to add our flask to the boiling water and wait for six minutes. Once that six minutes is over, we're gonna transfer this flask, all of this whole setup to a water, um, to a, an ice bath. I don't have that set up yet. Uh, and then we'll go from there. water is at a boil now so I'm going to go ahead and take a temperature. You may notice that I did add another clamp. Um, that was just so I could put my thermometer in the um, boiling water bath and then I will, since it's at a rolling boil, rolling boil now, I'll go ahead and read that temperature. Um, so that temperature is going to go into um, your data sheet. Um, that's going to be data table one and it's for trial one, the temperature of the boiling water bath. To make sure that when you use a thermometer that you record the correct significant figures. So this thermometer is marked by ones, so I'm going to estimate the tenths place. So the temperature here of our boiling water bath is, excuse me, 97.8. 97.8 degrees Celsius. Uh, and now since that water is boiling, I'm gonna go ahead and lower my flask into my boiling water bath, and then I'm going to time that for six minutes. Um, so first I'm gonna take out this thermometer. I'm just gonna set that on the counter for a minute, and then I'll get the temperature of the ice bath once I made it. So I'm gonna very carefully lower my flask into my water bath now. I'm gonna submerge it as much as I can. kind of limited by the, the clamp itself. And then I'm gonna start a timer for six minutes. Hey Siri, start a timer for six minutes. Okay, six minutes and counting. While that six minutes is going, I'm going to make my ice bath and then once that thermometer is cooled off a little bit, I'll put it um, in the ice bath uh, and get the temperature of that. Um, so I just have a cooler of ice. <laughs> What I'm gonna do is just kind of cover the bottom with ice and then I'm gonna um, cover that ice with water. Also, while I'm waiting that six minutes, I can go ahead and uh, record the barometric pressure. So I have a barometer here um, and I've read that and the pressure is um, 752.1 millimeters of mercury, 752 0.1 millimeters of mercury. So I have that barom um, barometric pressure. I have the barometer here that just measures the, uh, the pressure inside the lab.
Okay, our time is done, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this hot plate off. And then I want to transfer my flask um, very carefully to the ice bath. Um, so the ice bath, I did just take the temperature of that. That temperature is, that temperature is 2.9 degrees Celsius, 2.9 degrees Celsius. Okay, and then uh, if you read the directions, I'm on number eight. Carefully place your finger on top of the glass tubing. So you probably would have wanted to do this with another person, um, but I'm going to very carefully put my finger on top of this glass tubing. And then without removing my finger, I'm going to take this whole piece off of the ring stand and put it into my ice bath. So once I have gotten this loose, I'm gonna cover my put my finger on that glass tubing. I'm gonna do this very carefully again. It could be hot. Um, that glass, that piece of glass tubing shouldn't be, and it's not. So I'm gonna take this to my ice bath, and then I want to quickly invert this into the ice bath, and then I will remove my finger. Okay, so we want to submerge it as much as possible and we will leave it in the ice bath to cool completely for about four minutes. Hey Siri, will you set a timer for four minutes? Okay, four minutes and counting. So in four minutes, we'll come back and I'll show you how to take this out of the ice bath. Do you want to make sure that this cools completely and that you do not take your finger off of the glass tubing until it was under the water? Okay, but we are done with this hot water bath, so I'll just leave it to cool and then clean that up later. Okay, so the next start, the next part when my timer goes off after our flask is completely cool is to take it out of this ice bath. Um, so you wanna do that very carefully. You don't want to change the pressure dramatically while you're taking um, this flask out of this water. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna still handling it by that um, clamp that I have on it. I'm going to raise the bottom of my flask so that it looks like the water that's in the flask. And when we put that water, that hot flask in there, it sucked up some of the water. Um, so we want that water level to kind of be even with the water level that's in our ice bath. Um, that's gonna be kind of hard to see on video, um, but uh, you just wanna do that to ensure that the, the pressure um, it comes back to atmospheric pressure. There's no like giant sudden changes um, so that it sucks in a lot of water. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of raise that the bottom of the flask and then when I think it's about even with um, the water in my ice bath, which it, it is, then I'm gonna cover that tubing again, and then I'm gonna take it the rest of the way out of the water bath. Okay, then I'm just gonna set it here. I don't know if it's gonna stain with this clamp on it, so I'm gonna take that off. And then we wanna measure the volume of water that was pulled into the flask. So we're gonna do that with this 100, mil, 100 milliliter graduated cylinder. I'm gonna dry it off just a little bit so I can handle it. We have the temperature of our water bath, uh, of, the, of the cold water bath, and now we want to remove the stopper and then measure the volume of the water that came into our flask. Okay, so we're just gonna do this in this 100 milliliter graduated cylinder. Again, remember significant figures when you're measuring volumes or measuring temperatures. So the volume of water pulled into the flask for trial one is going to be 33. Nine milliliters. Thirty-three point nine milliliters. And then we also want to get the volume of that flask. Um, so to get the volume of this flask, you cannot assume that it's one hundred and twenty-five milliliters. That's the mark only right here. Remember, there's still this space here. And we also want to take into account where our stopper went into the flask. So I did mark that. 
it seems to be gone. So let me mark it one more time so I know how much water to put into it. Okay, so I marked the top of that bottom of that, um, the bottom of the stopper. So I know to fill the water up there. And then once I fill it all the way up to that mark, I will pour it into my big graduated cylinder so that I can measure the volume of the flask. Okay, so I hit that mark. Now I'm gonna pour it into my big graduated cylinder to get the volume. And that volume is gonna go on trial one, the volume of the flask. Again, still inside that data table one. So it's gonna be 151.7 milliliters. The volume of the flask for trial one is 151.7 milliliters. And then you need to find the vapor pressure of the water and the temperature of your ice bath. So you'll need to use your book. There is a table on page, ooh, I don't remember. I will look it up in just a second. To get the vapor pressure of water at the temperature of our ice bath. So you wanna find um, the vapor pressure at 2.9 degrees Celsius. Let me grab my book and see what page that table is on. That table, which is called the vapor pressure of water at various temperatures is on page 224 of your lab book. Um, so you need to look that up there um, for the temperature of your ice bath. Find that um, vapor pressure. And then you can do the calculations, um, calculations table one. It does show you exactly what you need to calculate. Uh, and then there will be information provided for trial two. Um, so it's the exact same setup um, as trial one uh, for trial two. So that data will be given to you. Um, from this data, make sure that you pay attention to the data analysis um, because you are going to uh, plot your hot point and your cold point and then extrapolate from that um, your value for absolute zero. Remember that absolute zero is going to correspond with a volume of zero, which is why it's a theoretical number. Um, something that has, that exists, um, has to have some sort of volume. Um, so remember this is theoretical. Also, when you make your plot, um, you're going to need to have a graph paper that has a very wide range of temperatures. Um, so your temperatures uh, for the points that you actually plot are around 100 and uh, about three uh, for this particular trial. Um, but you also have to extend that all the way to negative two, at, all the way to at least negative 273 degrees Celsius. Um, so make sure that when you do make that graph that you uh, make it wide enough that you can uh, extrapolate your experimental data uh, for the absolute zero. There's also questions for you to answer and then make sure that when you do make your graph that you kind of go by those how to make good graphs. Um, so that will be provided to you as well, the handout or in the PowerPoint. Um, but the last thing of this lab is just to clean up everything. Make sure that any lab that you do, you would clean up. Um, so we're gonna dump all this water in the trash or in the sink. Um, but if we were using different chemicals, we would need to make sure to use the right waste containers. And then just wash your glassware with soap and water. And I'll leave it on the drying rack uh, for later on to be put up.